Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at binary search with a walkthrough of code.org's Lesson 10, Unit 2. Alright, let's get going! If you're looking for just review questions, please skip ahead now. So usually I'll give a separate introduction, but this time I'm going to combine the whole thing in the code.org section. So we start with the code.org widget, it's a ticket generator, and the idea is that you give a ticket to each student in the class. So here is my class, my fake class. They all have numbers, and I'm going to run a lottery where I pick a number and one of them is going to win. So let's say I pick the number 717717. I need to search for the winner, and if I just go from left to right, it takes me one step to find the winner. But it's not always going to be quite this fast. I could have drawn the number 660 instead, and now searching for the winner, starting from left to right, it takes me five steps, which is longer than one step. This searching process, when I search for items one by one just like this, this is called a linear search. Sometimes you'll hear sequential search, but you'll want to know this term for the exam, linear search. So the first take home point about linear searches is that they can be fast with very few steps if your item's at the beginning. And linear searches can be slow or take a lot of steps if what you're looking for is at the end. So let's try this one more time, but now we're going to add three new people to the class. Once again, I'll pull a winning number out and that number is 717 again. As I search for the winner, from left to right, it takes me just one step. JLo wins again, but it won't always end up being this way. Let's try again. This time I pick another winner. This winner is 40. So once again, I'm going to search from left to right. And this time around, it's going to take me eight steps to get to Daddy Yankee. So as I have more items that I'm searching through, more items in my list, linear searches can take longer and longer. So recapping once again, linear searches can sometimes be fast and sometimes be slow. And as I add more items, my searches will take more steps. But this can vary a lot. Visualizing it, if this is a graph, where the x-axis is the number of items and y-axis is number of steps or time it takes. The red right here, this is an average of how much longer it's going to take when I increase the number of items. But again, you have a lot of variation. The item or classmate that you're looking for might be at the very beginning of your search or might be at the very end of your search. But on average, it's going to take longer if there are more items or more classmates I have to search through. So now I'm going to introduce the next concept, which is sorting. And sorting is pretty much just as it sounds. I'll demonstrate here with our class and their numbers. All of the people here are being sorted in numerical order. And you'll notice that this is a slow process. Now the details of sorting are not on the APCSP exam. If you're taking APCSA, you'll definitely need to know all sorts of sorting methods. But for APCSP, you just need a general idea of what it does. And we've done it numerically here, but you could also sort alphabetically, reverse numerically, or reverse alphabetically. But you might be wondering why we are doing sorting at all, given that it's taking so much time. And you're going to see in about one second right now. But to summarize the sorting process you just saw, one, it's slow, and two, we did it numerically, but we could do it alphabetically or reverse numerically or reverse alphabetically. So now we're going to introduce the concept of binary searching. So here's my people once again, this time all sorted by numbers. If I pick a winner out of my ball, and that winner is 717, instead of doing it with a linear search as before, I'm going to use a binary search. And the way the binary search works is this. First, I pick an item in the middle. In this case, I have eight items, so there's not exactly one thing in the middle, but truthfully, it doesn't matter all that much. So here, that's going to be 660. Then I'll ask myself, is the item I'm looking for higher or lower than this? 717 is higher than 660. And then I'll repeat the process over and over again. So from what's remaining, I'll pick an item in the middle. That happens to be 717. I found my winner. I found what I'm looking for. That happens to be 717, and I'm done. So what the binary search method does is eliminate half the items each time. In the linear search, I could potentially be searching every single item in the list. But with the binary search, again, I'm eliminating half the items each time, which in certain instances can mean a lot less items I need to check. Binary is usually going to be faster than linear but not always. Here's an example where if the item I'm looking for is at the very beginning, linear would find it in one step and binary would take three. But most of the time, but if you averaged out the results over many, many, many searches, binary would be better. Here I'm showing linear versus binary in picture form. The blue right here, that's the linear number of steps. You see that sometimes it'll be very, very fast, but sometimes it'll be really slow. The red, these are the worst case scenarios for binary. And what you see is, yes, sometimes linear will be faster, but most of the time, binary is going to be faster, especially as you search through many, many items. Again, we call this scaling. Binary search scales better than linear search. So to summarize the whole thing, linear search, sometimes called sequential search, is sometimes fast, 
sometimes slow, and overall will scale poorly. Binary search, first you have to sort before you binary search. But if you do, it gives you good scaling and it can be more efficient than linear search. Efficiency is a term that appears on the AP exam. And finally, one last point, because I think this point gets glossed over by a lot of texts. Sorting is really, really, really slow. So you're only gonna sort and therefore do a binary search if you do many searches. On each search, you gain a little bit of time. And in the end, that will overcome the amount of time or the amount of cost that you spend to sort. So something like a dictionary, a phone book, student IDs, these are things that you search a lot of times. And in these cases, it makes sense to spend all that cost to sort because you'll win that time back when you do many, many, many searches. Got it? Good. All right, code.org's question two. What's the third step using binary search? It's basically asking how the binary search works. We start by taking the number in the middle, which is 25, and we're looking for 32, so we go higher. So we cut it in half, take the number in the middle, and that's 47, and 32 is lower. So we cut what's remaining in half one more time. Remember, all of this works because we're searching for a number. We could sort it from high to low or low to high. It doesn't matter. As long as whatever we're searching for, you're sorting by the same way. And finally, we have this question asking which is true of two different algorithms. We just worked on linear search versus binary search. And so we know that it's possible for these two different algorithms, even though they're solving the same problem, to have different efficiencies. So the answer here is D. Practice questions. Question one, one of these is true about searching. Well, right away, you know the data has to be sorted before binary searches can happen. So the answer right away is D. But you can look at the other ones. A, binary search is always faster than linear search. Not always. If what you're looking for is at the beginning, linear search can be faster. B, linear search is faster after sorting. Actually, no, not really. It's going to be about the same on average. And now you spent all that time sorting, which is kind of a waste of time because you only need to sort if you're doing binary searches. And C, linear search is always faster than binary search. No, actually, usually this is not true. Every so often it can be true, but usually it's not true. So again, the answer here is D. Question two, you have a list of 100 items that is sorted. The maximum searches you would need to do in a binary search is roughly this many. So I've seen a lot of practice questions that look pretty much exactly like this. The numbers might be higher, might go up to 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. You'll have to be able to do it all. And they all follow the same concept. Just remember that the binary search eliminates half the remaining items after each iteration. The first iteration, there's about 50 left. The second, there's 25, so on and so forth. It takes about seven iterations for you to get where there's no other possible. Just practice writing these out and you'll be able to solve these problems, no problem. Question three, one of these is not true. And then it goes through a whole bunch of scenarios for linear and binary searches. So I've written out all the scenarios here. The linear minimum number of searches is one, if it's at the beginning. The maximum number of searches for a linear search is 30, if it's at the end, if I have 30 items, that is. The minimum for a binary is going to be 1 if it's in the middle. And the maximum, if I do the calculation, it's about 5. So the one that's not true here is C. Question 4. Which of the following could one do? 1. A binary search for a number on a list of numbers sorted numerically. We can do this. Basically, what we want to know is when we sort it, our test is when we search, can we eliminate half the numbers at each iteration? And we can here. Two, two, a binary search for size on a row of sponges that have been sorted from largest to smallest. Again, we can eliminate one half of them per iteration. We can do this. Three, a binary search for a name on a list of names sorted alphabetically. Once more, we can eliminate one half of the items on each iteration. So the answer here is D, one, two, and three. All of these are possible, but later on we'll see an example of where we cannot do a binary search. Question five, which of the following is doable? One, a linear search of a number on an unsorted list of numbers. This is definitely doable. In fact, there is no such thing as a binary search because the list is unsorted. Linear search is the only thing you can do here, and so one is true. Two, a binary search of a word when the words are in the order that they appear in a book. So this is something that you cannot do. There is a sorting of some sort, I guess, the order, the sort. The sort is in the order that the words appear in the book. But this type of sort is not going to allow you to eliminate half the remaining items per iteration. And that's the important thing. The sorting allows you to eliminate half the items per iteration. But there's no way to do that here. You can't say, I'm going to go higher, I'm going to go lower. So two is not possible. Three, sorting a list of numbers that you will later search 10,000 times. This is something you can definitely do. You can always sort a list. It's not going to make sense to sort that list unless you search a lot of times, but you could always sort the list. So this is also true. So the answer is C, one and three only. Question six, the following is an illustration of blank. So this is really a test of the notation that you'll see on the AP exam. You loop over each item in the list and you check to see if the number that you're on is equal to what you're looking for. 
This is pretty much the definition of a linear search, so the answer is A. A binary search, you'd have to have two numbers, take the average, which finds the middle of the two, and have all these different scenarios depending on if you're higher or lower than the number you're looking for. It's going to look something like this on the right. It's much more complicated. Anyway, this is not binary search. Merge search and bubble search don't exist. They are merge sort and bubble sort. So again, the answer is A, linear or sequential search. Question 7. Which of the following is true? 1. A linear search on lists of 500 and 5,000 items will take, on average, approximately 10 times as long for the longer list than for the shorter list. This is true. A linear search on 500 items will take about 250 on average. 250 searches. A linear search on 5,000 items will take, on average, 2,500 searches. So the bigger list takes about 10 times as long on average. So 1 is true. 2. A binary search on lists of 500 and 5,000 items will take, on average, approximately 10 times as long. This is not true. Binary search for 500 items, the max will take about 10 searches. In binary search for 5,000 items, the max will be about 15 searches. So the binary search we see is a more efficient algorithm the more items we're searching through. So because this is not 10 times as long, 2 is not true. 3. In general, it is a good idea to sort lists even if you only search them one to two times. This is not true. You got to remember that sorting lists takes a long time. It costs a lot of computational time. So if you're going to sort, if you're going to spend all that time sorting, you should be searching a lot of times. So three is not true, and the answer is A, one only. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.